Thanksgiving. This is probably one of my favorite things in life. We do it a lot regularly, so random acts of kindness is something that we're all kind of familiar with here. But it's something that I think everybody should do. It feeds your soul and takes you out of that place where all you think about is like me, 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 and into other people's hearts. Hey, I'm Wendy Valencia. If you're new to my channel, we are a family of three or five if you count my mother and father. We live with them. We're on a debt-free journey to pay off more than $300,000 worth of debt. <sighs> that number disgusts me every single time I think about it. But on the upside, we're well over halfway. So yeah, we've paid off this much to date which is pretty awesome. So I'd love it if y'all would just stick around and walk through life with us. That would be amazing. Budget Girl invited me to participate in this collab, which I love. And I know every single one of you who are watching already know Budget Girl, but just in case you don't, I'm gonna link her channel and all the other collaborators down below. There's a lot of them. And there are some really awesome channels doing this. As I mentioned, we give regularly. We don't talk about it much on this channel because I believe that giving is so deeply personal and when and how you decide to give is up to you and no one should judge you if you're on a debt-free journey or if you're not, you shouldn't feel pressure from anyone but you to give. And in truth, if you're familiar with my channel, giving's actually how we got into debt. We took out bank loans for over $170,000 helping other people out. We never really thought about anything more than the payment, but then it, we didn't have trouble making the payments. We, we were good financially, but then we moved to Washington, DC and things started to look a little tighter. Because this place is super expensive, y'all. We decided it was time for a change. And here we are. And we paid off this much money. Did did I mention? Seriously. The thing is, we, we have a giving category and there's stuff in it every month. But now our giving is just planned and budgeted. And we don't overgive usually. Christmas time is a problem for us because we have a tendency to overgive at Christmas time. In fact, it's usually pretty disastrous for us, you know, because we do our budget and then we're like, well, shouldn't we give some to this person and this person and this person? And I really want to give this item to this person. And it's a little more than we plan. It, it turns into a debacle. <laughs> but in 10 years, we really haven't ever stuck to our Christmas budget but we've come close a couple of times, but we are no longer struggling in January to recover from Christmas because we're doing awesome financially. But since we keep our giving private today, I want to talk about some of the like most significant giving that I've personally done in the past. And we're not talking about like the most um, largest amount of money giving. I'm talking about the most like impactful giving that we've ever done. And so let me go ahead and set the scene for you. I was single and free. Oh, freedom. <laughs> I had just moved to Managua, Nicaragua, and I was a single 20 something girl living in the rich part of town. I had a three bedroom, four bath house. Well, four bedrooms if you count the maid's quarters. I had a maid, a gardener, and a driver. Not because as a single person I actually needed these things, but because in my role it, with my job, it was kind of expected that I would hire these people. But for example, my maid, she worked a 40 hour week because that was the normal schedule. and. I'm a crazy neat person. Look, I mean, there's like nothing. And so I'm pretty sure all she did all day, every day was hang out and watch TV and play with my dog. And for that service, I paid her $80 a month, $80 a month. I'm not even kidding. 
And when I was living in Nicaragua at that time, there was a person standing in every single intersection begging for money. And I'll tell you, I don't really support begging in any form, shape, or way. I don't agree with it. I think there are better ways that people can get help. But in Nicaragua, it was common. And I was just shocked by the sheer number of people that begged. The kids that hung out in the streets and they were dirty and they hadn't showered in months. My gut kind of told me that the kids were probably a scam and they were probably paid to be out there and every morning they went out and like rubbed dirt on themselves to look more authentic but i wasn't about to support that kind of behavior but on my way to work that very first day there was this mom out there with her son and he was obviously had down syndrome and I had no clue how old he was, but for some reason, I was immediately drawn to them as a couple. I saw them on the way home and I saw them on the way to work and on the way home the day, the next day and the day after that and the day after that. I really wanted to give them some money, but I didn't think pocket change would actually help them. So I never gave them any money. But every day as I drove by, I smiled and waved at the boy, kind of like a, I see you, I know you exist sort of wave. He clearly loved his mom. And I'd often like see her sitting on a milk crate with this ginormous kid sitting on her lap. But she looked tired and I knew she had a rough life. So over the years that I was in Nicaragua, they grew to recognize me. I mean, look at me, I have blonde hair and blue eyes and they're not really common in Nicaragua. So I pretty much stood out like a sore thumb. But every day as I drove by, I'd smile and wave. I never gave them any money and I actually felt really bad about it because I felt like I had developed a connection with them but I had a bigger plan. So after more than three years there, when it was time for me to leave the country and move to Colombia, where I'd meet Mauricio eventually, I moved into a hotel for a few days. The hotel was located on the other side of town, so I knew I probably wasn't going to see this mother and son team again. And so the day before the movers came to pack me out, I went to the bank to get cash. I had planned from very early on that Rather than give them money every day, I was going to wait until one of my last days there and give them $100. So I took out the money from the bank and I put it in an envelope. And I went to a local toy store and bought the boy a wooden airplane. He never really had anything to play with while he was out there. He just kind of hung out and didn't really do anything. So I thought maybe a toy would be cool for him. And I really wanted to give him something too. So as I went home that day, I came to the light and I smiled at the woman and I kind of like waved her over. This is the Nicaraguan way of saying, come here. And I stuck out the envelope and the plane out the window and, and I handed it to the woman and the light changed. And as I drove away, I could see her open the envelope and she had this stunned look on her face. And Basically, I figure I had given her what she earned in at least a month, maybe even two or three. And imagine how you would feel if somebody handed you your monthly income as just a kind gesture. So I don't know whatever happened to her. I left shortly after that and I obviously never saw her again. I don't know if she's still out there on that, that street corner. I don't know if my money helped her. I, Honestly, I don't even know if, you know, it was a scam, but I don't think so. And, and I have a pretty good scam meter. So I hope that my little gesture made some sort of impact on her life. And I hope it helped her in just a tiny way. And truthfully, I know this is all selfish because it made me so happy to help her, just like it makes me happy to help everyone. So, I'll see you in the next one. See ya. We're out.